WCDX News, honoring black history with this moment of hidden history. African Americans have made great contributions to our country for centuries. More than half a century ago, the historic case of Brown versus the Board of Education declared state laws establishing separate establishing separate public schools for black and white students to be unconstitutional. Following the decision, there was a lot of resistance in many places, including Alabama and right here in Huntsville. Charity Chambers has that story. September 9, 1963 is a day that changed Alabama public schools forever. My dad has said he thought, how could he ask these other people to send their children, their black children, into these white schools if he wasn't willing to do that himself? Dr. Sony Hereford III and his son, Sony Hereford IV, walked hand in hand up to Fifth Avenue School in Huntsville, Alabama. And on that day, Hereford became the first African American student to integrate public schools in the state. But leading up to that day, around 30 black families had signed their children up to integrate public schools. Numerous, numerous parents had signed up to take their children. And next thing you know, bosses start calling and saying, look, if I see you at that school, you'll lose your job. And it dwindled down to four. As the day approached for school to start, we were getting uh, uh, phone calls, death threats to the house. On September 3rd, 1963, which was supposed to be the first day of school for Sony Hereford, he and his father walked up to the school only to find it locked and guarded by armed state troopers dispatched by Governor George Wallace, who earlier that year had pledged segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> As I understand it, Governor Wallace kept the four schools in Huntsville that were going to integrate. He kept those schools closed. And I haven't been able to verify this, but I believe the other schools were allowed to open on September 3rd. Seeking help, Dr. Hereford contacted the federal judge that issued the order to desegregate Huntsville City Schools. And on Monday, September 9th, 1963, Hereford successfully enrolled his son at Fifth Avenue School. There were federal marshals here to protect us in case there was some trouble and they were dressed in plain clothes so that they could mix with the crowd and that way if there was any trouble they'd be right there among anybody who might start some trouble. One of the things that I'll always remember was being in first grade and we had the old cafeteria style where you have trays stacked up on the rail and you take your tray down and put it on the rail and you slide it along. And there was a, a little girl, white girl of course, uh, who wasn't tall enough to get her tray down off the top of the stack. And uh, I got it down for her and she told me, uh, oh no, my mother told me never to take anything from a <laughs> But uh, even at six years old, I understood that she didn't even know what she was saying to me, you know? So that's a lesson that I've carried with me my whole life. And a few years later, that was a lesson that certainly came in handy as he attended Butler High School. You know, we had some race riots there because we had one whole end of the gym, the entire wall was painted with a big Confederate flag. And the band would play Dixie at the pep rallies. And we actually went to the school board and petitioned the school board. And I remember they issued something saying that uh, there would be no more Confederate indicia or regalia on school property, which included Milton Frank Stadium and Goldsmith Schiffman Stadium. Hereford would later be elected as the student body president of Butler High, a school that was only about 15% black at the time. To this day, the Hereford family is still making an impact on the Tennessee Valley community. In 2016, an elementary school in Huntsville was named after Sony Hereford's father, who was a civil rights leader. Like Dad said, back in the day, people used to throw things at him and spit at him, and now they name schools after it, you know, so that, which I think is a statement of how far our society has come. I'm Charity Chambers for Hidden History. Now, Dr. Hereford III passed away back in 2016, but not before he got to see the groundbreaking of the school that was named after him. Sony Hereford IV is now 62 years old and lives in Madison County. For more on this story and other stories celebrating Black History Month, just go to our Rocket City Now app or website.